The recent developments surrounding the Windsors and their handling of the Invictus Games have not only drawn widespread attention, but also sparked a significant wave of criticism, even from their staunchest media allies. It's a telling sign when even the most ardent supporters start questioning the actions of the royal family. Let's delve into the crux of the matter. The Windsors, in a move that left many baffled and disheartened, chose to overlook the significance of the Invictus Games held in The Hague in 2022 and Dusseldorf in 2023. What's more disconcerting is the apparent lack of acknowledgement and support from King Charles himself. Despite the remarkable achievements of the British Invictus team in Dusseldorf, including the commendable medal hall by British veterans, there was a conspicuous absence of any well wishes or recognition from the royal household. Instead, reports surfaced of the Windsors preoccupying themselves with trivial matters, seemingly indifferent to the profound impact of the Invictus Games on the lives of wounded veterans. One cannot help but question the motivations behind such indifference. Was it a deliberate attempt to undermine the significance of the Games or simply an oversight born out of negligence? Whatever the case, it has undoubtedly cast a shadow over the reputation of the royal family, particularly in the eyes of those directly affected by the Invictus Games. Fast forward to the present, and the repercussions of these actions are becoming increasingly apparent. With the British government now pulling out all the stops to secure the bid to host the 2027 Invictus Games, there's a palpable sense of urgency to rectify past missteps. It's evident that there's a concerted effort to salvage what's left of the royal family's tarnished image in the realm of veterans' affairs. Enter Prince Harry, a key figure in the Invictus movement and a staunch advocate for wounded servicemen and women. His decision to attend a forthcoming anniversary service, despite the apparent reluctance of his family to join him, speaks volumes about his unwavering commitment to the cause. It's a gesture that not only underscores his personal dedication, but also serves as a stark contrast to the perceived apathy displayed by certain members of the royal household. The fact that this event has prompted Tom Sykes of the Daily Beast to dedicate a royalist column to dissecting the inner workings of the Windsor's response speaks volumes. It's indicative of a broader sentiment within both the media and the public, highlighting the growing disillusionment with the royal family's handling of matters pertaining to the Invictus Games. In essence, what we're witnessing is more than just a series of diplomatic missteps or public relations blunders. It's a reflection of deeper systemic issues within the monarchy, shedding light on the disconnect between the privileged elite and the very people they're meant to serve and represent. Moving forward, it's imperative for the Windsors to not only acknowledge their shortcomings, but also take tangible steps towards redemption and reconciliation with the veterans' community. In conclusion, the saga surrounding the Windsors and the Invictus Games serves as a sobering reminder of the power dynamics at play within the royal family and the broader socio-political landscape. It's a narrative that underscores the importance of humility, empathy, and accountability in the exercise of authority and influence. Only time will tell whether the Windsors heed this wake-up call and embark on a path of genuine reform and renewal. Certainly, here's an extended and engaging version of your article. The treatment of Prince Harry by various governments around the world offers a stark contrast to the cold shoulder he's received from his own family's institution. It's not just the Nigerian government that has recognized Harry's stature as a high-level dignitary. The German and Dutch governments, along with their respective leaders, have extended warm welcomes to him. Even the Canadian government, NATO, and numerous other entities have acknowledged his contributions and status on the global stage. However, amidst this widespread recognition and appreciation, there remains a glaring absence of acknowledgement from the Windsors themselves. It seems that their disdain and resentment towards anything associated with the Sussexes have clouded their judgment to the point where they cannot even muster a congratulatory message to the British Invictus team, let alone acknowledge the significant impact of the Invictus Games as an organization. Moreover, the suggestion that Invictus relies on a royal endorsement for fundraising is not just laughable. It's downright absurd. The reality is that Invictus has thrived and flourished, thanks to Prince Harry's proactive approach in securing international funding years ago. This stands in stark contrast to other events, such as the Commonwealth Games, which, despite royal endorsements, struggle to attract sufficient funding and interest from host countries. The juxtaposition between the success of Invictus and the financial woes of the Commonwealth Games underscores a fundamental truth. Genuine passion and dedication, not merely a royal stamp of approval, are the driving forces behind impactful initiatives. Prince Harry's unwavering commitment to the Invictus cause has resonated far beyond the confines of traditional royal circles, garnering support and admiration from individuals and organizations worldwide. In a world where cynicism often reigns supreme, the Invictus Games serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration for countless individuals, particularly wounded veterans. 
It's a testament to the power of resilience, camaraderie, and the human spirit to overcome adversity and forge a brighter future. As we reflect on the broader implications of the Windsor's attitude towards the Sussexes and the Invictus Games, it becomes evident that this is more than just a family feud. It's a reflection of deeper systemic issues within the monarchy. It raises important questions about the role and relevance of the royal family in contemporary society and the need for greater transparency, accountability, and inclusivity within royal institutions. Ultimately, the success of initiatives like Invictus hinges not on royal endorsements or grand gestures, but on the genuine connections forged between individuals and communities, united by a common purpose. Prince Harry's ongoing commitment to this cause serves as a reminder that true leadership is not bestowed by birthright, but earned through compassion, empathy, and a steadfast dedication to making a positive difference in the world. As we look towards the future, let us hope that the Windsors can set aside their personal grievances and embrace the opportunity to support and uplift initiatives that truly make a difference in the lives of others. After all, isn't that what the essence of royalty should be about? Serving the greater good and inspiring hope for a better tomorrow.